Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. I want to thank, firstly thank everybody for their donations. We received a generous amount. Of the, <laughs> my mom chose the term red flag. <laughs> Not distress, but anyway, uh, she got her medication for her asthma, so that's good. Very good. And uh, I had, and with a little bit of that, I had to pull her. her bank account out of the reg because a couple of on my graphs <sighs> but anyway we're still gonna need we're still need money to help us be able to eat better for the rest of the month but also our electric bill came and it's due immediately rounding up to about two hundred dollars so anyway that's the detail right there so I'll put the information below this video to let you know how to directly donate through my PayPal. But anyway, in the meantime, we're beginning a I'm beginning a new a new series of a recommended story called Unicorns, Rainbows, and a Blue Bird of Happiness. I have not read this thing, though I started to recently at bottom me, but I checked with my uh, friend who assures me that it all ends be it all ends a lot better than the way it sounds at first. So anyway, it'll be like a chapter per day. Uh, every other day or so. But anyway, um, do this by mood. I mean, I might end up doing the next chapter as soon as tomorrow. But anyway, we're doing this. I'm going to start reading chapter one. Alright, so... Chapter 1, Laundry Day. Huh, let's see. Do I have everything? Do I have everything? An average sized man with pink hair said with a smile as he stood in the center of his bedroom wearing a light blue tuxedo as well as a pair of pink and blue checkered pants. His bedroom consisted of a little board and a simple wooden bed and a wardrobe where he kept all of his clothes. His walls were decorated with posters of various cartoon characters that he enjoyed. If one looked behind what the posters, one would find that his walls appeared to be covered with red paint. A closer analysis revealed that the red paint was actually dried blood. The man was looking down at a basket of laundry. All of the clothes within the basket appeared to be covered in blood or some other type of bodily fluid. The pink-haired man had killed six people within the previous seven days, and he always took his victim's clothes as a souvenir of his crime. I think I have everything, the man grinned as he lifted the basket and carried it outside of his room. He looked down at his basket of clothes and hummed a little song as he remembered the previous owners of the clothes in his basket. Everybody's gotta die sometime. The man sang as he opened his front door and stepped outside. The heat from the warm afternoon sun greeted him as he walked towards his pink car. He never bothered locking his door when he left his home. Most people avoid entering his house because there was no reason to be in the house when he wasn't there. He didn't have anything worth stealing. As someone did steal his microwave or his gaming console, then he would most likely kill him or her. Hmm. Not that anyone knew that he would kill the criminals who stole from him. Everybody simply suspected that he would be very angry with anybody who stole from him. Nobody wanted to see what a man with pink hair who always wore a blue tuxedo and pink pants would do to a criminal. The man placed a basket of laundry in the back of his car and continued humming the song that was playing in his head as he sat the driver's seat of his car. He started the engine. Once the car started, he drove out of his driveway. I wonder if uh, Edith would be happy to see me, the man mused to himself as he thought of the orange and white hamster who ran the laundromat where he went when he needed his clothes clean. The man had never purchased a washing machine, or a dryer, or even a stove or a fridge. He 
he had managed to live his life with little more than a bathtub, a sink, and a microwave. The drive to the laundromat was over quickly, and once the man found a parking space in front of the laundromat, he parked his car and stepped outside. Once he had removed the basket from his car and had begun to carry it towards the laundromat, he heard a very familiar voice. Munkle! Munkle! The voice cried out. The man smiled as the pigeon, who had screamed the words, landed on his shoulders, started nuzzling his neck. Well, I missed you too, darling, the man said to the female pigeon, who had landed on his shoulder. He and the pigeon had been dating for around four months, and they had already been talking about marriage. Munko! The pigeon asked the man as she gestured her foot towards the basketball play clothes. The man continued to smile as he pushed the door leading into the laundromat open with his foot. Sits people, my dear, I killed sits this week. I haven't felt this motivated and happy in a long time. The man said as he stepped towards the counter in the laundromat and placed the basket next to the golden bell on top of the counter. I am probably happy because you finally disagreed to have intercourse with me. Do you really think that you're ready to have a child? The man asked the pigeon on the shoulder who attempted to smile. Monko! The pigeon said excitedly as she started nodding her head furiously in response to his question. The man continued to smile as he started to pet the little bird on his shoulder with his index finger while ringing the golden bell on the counter with his other hand. Bing bing! Welcome to Edith's laundromat! A white hamster with orange spots said cheerfully as she leapt up from the behind the counter with her eyes closed. Hello, Edith. How was your week? The man asked the hamster, who opened her eyes and smiled at the man who had visited her laundromat once every week for close to three years. The hamster knew that the man was a killer, but she enjoyed his company and his business. I had a wonderful week. Although I'm sure that my week wasn't as exciting as your hunting expedition, how many animals did you kill this week? Edith asked the man, who smiled as he started to proudly put the laundry basket on the counter. I killed six animals this week, and next week I might kill six more. Uncle! The pigeon sitting on the man's shoulders announced, proudly as she started to nuzzle the man's cheek. Edith grinned as she walked towards the gray cash register on the counter. It sounds like you've been very busy, the hamster said happily as she started to press some buttons on the cash register. The man reached into his pocket and pulled out his bright pink wallet. I've been feeling a little bit more motivated lately, and it's all because of this lovely lady right here. The man said with pride, evident in his voice as he started to gently stroke the pigeon on his shoulder while placing his wallet on the counter. I'm glad you're so motivated. It's good for business. If my best customer is motivated to continue bringing me work, the hamster said as she finished pressing the correct sequence of buttons on the register. Hmm. Those clothes will cost $120 to clean, plus any applicable taxes, the hamster said with a chuckle as the man took out some bills from his wallet and placed them on the counter. $20 per kill is always... Maybe I should stop killing for a while and save some money, the man said with a laugh as he that was returned by the hamster as she counted his money and prepared to give him change from the cash register. Perhaps. But then the only reason that you would have to talk with me is karaoke night. Uncle! The pigeon sitting on the man's shoulder yelled as the hamster chuckled in synchronization with the man. It was amusing seeing the slight agitation of the pigeon. I suppose game night is another reason that he has to talk with me, the hamster said as she remembered the many times that she had played video games with the man and his fiance. So, will I see you tonight at karaoke night? The man asked the hamster, who had started to move the clothes, one at a time, towards the washing machine at the back of the laundromat. The hamster smiled as she carried a particularly bloody yellow shirt that had the smiling face of a cartoon pony on the front and the message claiming that the shirt's previous owner had survived Cartoon Con on the back. Of course, the hamster said to the man who was already walking towards the door. The man and his fiancée waved goodbye as they left the establishment, leaving the hamster all alone with the bloody clothes. I wish that I knew more serial killers. Three seems to be enough to keep me in business. If I knew a few more, then I'd be rich, 
the hamster chuckled to herself as she walked towards the counter to get another article of clothing to wash. Hmm. Some people ask me how I can walk the streets at night. Knowing that there are damaged people out in the dark who would love to do terrible things to a cute little hamster like me, I tell them that those evil people are really nice when you get to know them. Edith mused to herself as she picked up a bloody pair of blue jeans and started to carry them towards the washing machine. Nobody will hurt me. My friends won't let them. Friendship is a powerful thing that makes life worth living and a business profitable, especially my business. Edith continued talk, continue, talking to herself as she placed the jeans into the washing machine. She was taken out of her thoughts when she heard the door open to her laundromat open. She immediately ran towards the counter and leapt on top of it to greet her customer. Welcome to Edith's laundromat. I read the sign. Man's voice spoke and Edith opened her eyes to see a fairly short man dressed in the red and blue uniform of the Ebbeville Police Department. The man had black hair and black mustache that Edith didn't like. The hamster had never enjoyed the company of people with mustaches. The hamster gulped nervously as her eyes wandered towards the basket of play clothes on her counter. I'm not going to arrest you. This is more of a personal visit. However, I imagine that more people are going to get suspicious if you continue leaving incriminating evidence like this in plain sight in a business open to the public. The man said with a dark chuckle as he returned with a nervous chuckle from Edith. Maybe I should be a little more careful, Edith said timidly, and the man chuckled a second time as he picked up a pair of bloody pink frilly panties in the basket. Or maybe you should simply learn to make friends with someone who can help you continue to run your business, the man said as he placed the bloody panties into his right pocket. Kevin won't like that, Edith whispered to herself as she thought of the man who had recently paid her to wash the clothes in the laundry basket. Kevin Wright was one of her best friends as well as one of her best customers. He had the weird fascination with the color pink, but he is discriminated against her customers for such a small issue, she'd likely be out of the job. All I want to do is that... Oh. All I want to do is ask you a few questions about your previous customer. I don't want to know his name, I don't want to know where he lives, I just want to know if he's related to the latest crime that I'm investigating. The man said, seemingly ignoring Edith's whisper. The man reached into his left pocket and retrieved a handful of pictures of what appeared to be a crime scene in a teenage girl's bedroom. Hmm. The bloody corpse of a teenage girl could be seen on the bed next to a light blue smiling teddy bear. Edith examined the photos for a few minutes while the man appeared to study the bloody clothes. His eyes wandered towards a second basket filled with clean clothes near the dryer in the back of the laundromat. He, admit, he absentmindedly wondered if Edith cleaned kill clothes for other killers. He's not involved with this murder, Edith said after a few minutes, and the man smiled as he retrieved his photos and placed them back into his pocket. Well, how do you know? The man asked, and Edith chuckled nervously. I've been cleaning his clothes for two years. I know how he works, Edith said to the man who raised an eyebrow in response. Huh. He kills couples, not single victims. Edith explained to the man who smiled and reached into his pocket again. He also steals his victim's clothes and... Oh. He also steals his victim's clothes and brings them to me to wash. He's very protective of his souvenirs. Hmm. This is the victim's sister. They were allegedly involved in a romantic relationship at the time of the murder. They were sleeping together in the same bed. The man explained to the hamster as he showed her a photo from his pocket. The hamster shook her head without even glancing at the pink-haired girl in the picture. He would have killed them together. He wouldn't let her sister live, he had said to the man, who continued to smile. He was... He was interrupted. A girl walked into the room and allegedly scared him away. The man explained to the hamster, who shook her head once more. I know him better than anyone alongside from his girlfriend, he had said defiantly. He did not kill that girl. 
The man started her with her amused expression on his face. As the two stared at each other, the door leading to the laundromat opened. And as soon as they heard the sound of the door squeaking open, the two turned their gaze towards the person who dared to intrude on their conversation. Oh. I was about to take a bath when Sabrina told me that a cop had decided to pay this place a visit, Kevin Wright said from the entrance to the laundromat. The police officer smiled as he turned around so that his entire body was facing the man wearing the blue tuxedo, and he had out his hand for the man to shake. I'm very pleased to meet you, the police officer said as his hand remained extended. I've heard so much about you over the years. After few seconds of studying the man and his smiling face, Kevin held out his hand and shook the extended hand of the police officer. My name's Kevin. Although I suspect that you knew that you know that already, how may I help you? Kevin asked the man who smiled cheerfully. My name's Michael. I'm not sure if you know this, but there have been a few murders recently that have been credited to the so-called couples killer. Like explained while Kevin's brace Kevin's face brightened as the man mentioned the nickname that the media had given him. Of course, I've killed six people within the past week, and I'm probably going to kill more next week. Hmm. Uh, I'm to... oh. We've credited you with seven murders this week. Mike explained once he was finished speaking... He and Edith noticed that Kevin's face had started to twitch. That's impossible, Kevin stirred slightly, with, which was a habit that he had developed when he was either deep in thought or nervous. That's an uh, odd number, number of... I hate odd numbers. I only kill in pairs. Kevin explained, his voice rising in volume and pitch as the thought of being credited for a single murder instead of a pair of murders flashed into his mind. That's it, Kevin said coldly to the man who placed his hand upon his shoulder. Of course I'll fix it. Killers have to stick together, don't we? Mike said to Kevin. Oh, I read that wrong. Mike said to Kevin, who looked at him for a moment before grinning mischievously. Hmm. I've always wanted a friend on the police force, Kevin. Oh, I've always wanted a man on the police force, Kevin said to the man, whose hand continued to remain on his shoulder. Uh, did you say that you're a killer? Edith made her presence known from the place where she was standing on the counter, which surprised the two men, who had forgotten that she was in the room with them. Of course I'm a killer, young lady. If I wasn't, then we wouldn't be having this conversation, the man said simply as he started walking towards the door, named to the world outside the business owned by the hamster. Until we meet again, Kevin said as he opened the door. Do you like karaoke? Kevin asked, and Mike nodded his head. Perhaps next time that we meet, we can be. Perhaps next time that we meet can be later tonight at the bar at the end of the street. All right, that's the end of chapter one. Tune in next time for chapter two, karaoke night. In the meantime, uh, donations would still be very much appreciated. Especially to help with the uh, electric bill, you wouldn't want me to be without electricity or Wi-Fi, would you? Mm -hmm. Me and my mom, we gotta keep our dogs fed here and everything. Mm -hmm. Alright, so until next, until next time when I'll read the next chapter. Have a good day. Thank you.